Hi friends, a very, very warm welcome to the 52nd episode of Chai Shai Etc. Thank you for tuning in and today we have with us a very dear friend of mine, Chetna Mehrotra, the founder of Rangbhumi, the Applied Theatre Organization. Chetna is a versatile person. I've seen her as a corporate woman. I've seen her quit her job to take care of her child and then get into the field of alternate education or rather I should say the new mainstream education. And before I speak more about Chetna, I would like to bring her on. Hi Chetna. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Namaste, everybody. <laughs> so great. <laughs> How's you been, girl? How have you been? Long, long, long time. <laughs> long time, and we both have now short hair. <laughs> long time ago. I think we can just start from once upon a time. <laughs> And this is everybody, my ex-boss, who actually really taught me how to go out there and be that woman and speak to the men, negotiate, come back with a target. Done. <laughs> Those were some days, huh? Those were some days. The boots and the jackets. <laughs> Of course, you were a style icon with your, I still remember the hat you wore, the gumboots, the leather jacket, and you just walk past the alley. This kanchan is coming, kanchan is coming. <laughs> terror, no? Complete terror. <laughs> well, you were amazing. Uh, it I was loved so it was so much fun working with you, Chetna. It was so much fun working with you. I remember those rickshaw rides. And uh, oh, oh my God, I remember you uh, giving up your corporate career to take care of your son. And instead of me, you know, I was expected uh, to counsel you and ask you to stay back. And instead of doing that, I was like, Girl, go do whatever you want. <laughs> I know, I felt like that Simran, you know, like, uh, yes, all right, let me go. I think I was fortunate enough to have you as my senior, always, because, of course, one is that, of course, the style part was something I resonated with, but there was also this very firm yet very feminine uh, inspiration that you held for all of us, especially for me, I think, still. Chill, chill, that's the word, that's the word of life, right? <laughs> yes, yes. Thank you so much, Chetna, for helping me style my wardrobe when I came to Bombay. <laughs> Everybody, culture, of course, one more time was my first image consultancy and everybody whom I've been telling you about Kanchan she's the one she's the one a lot of people know you as my first client and they must be watching thank you and I had a great time it was almost it wasn't like of course there was this client with me but there's also this allowance that I had with you in my learning journey which was amazing amazing Thank you. Thank you for also being my personal shopper. I didn't know anything about Bombay. Oh, yes. Beach candy and... <laughs> and I can't forget that jewelry shop in Bandra we went. <laughs> Me and my jumkas. Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> Chetna, uh, you are a woman of strength. I admire you for every decision you've taken in life. 
I admire you for the way you have followed your heart, the way you have followed your soul rather. <laughs> the way you followed your soul's calling. And uh, I remember you taking your child out of school and home educating him. Yeah. <laughs> What's the home education all about, Chit? Now, why is such a such a drastic move. I know that you are a change facilitator. I know that um, you, you've studied drama from Delhi, right? Which which place? NST? Yeah, I did my summer application. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we have an NST alumni with us, guys. <laughs> Presenting Chetna Mehrotra. <laughs> Madam, why? What made you take that decision and step off uh, taking your child out of the conventional school and giving him home education? Hmm. So uh, let me be uh, very all out. It wasn't me. It was the child who took that decision. And then I... <clears throat> And I said, uh, maybe initially it was I, and then we became we, because my partner whom I live in with and my son, Adi, we all kind of co-created this space for ourselves. And so my son just came one day and he said, if the child gets, my classmate got like 10 on, uh, you know, 15 on uh, 15, and I got 13 on 15, but the coach is asking him to teach other people. Why not me? So why two marks makes that difference in a child's life? And if I can't understand fraction, I told my teacher, can I just tell, can she just tell me about the pizzas and the fraction of the pizza? And she told me, junk food examples not allowed. So, and he came up with these questions when he was a very young child. And I also processed with him because my schooling was very beautiful. I had a beautiful school, all the Dehradunites, whoever is listening will agree that we had horse tracks, we had cultural. My school name was Dune Cultural Center. Cultural Center Thau. Arts and music, we were taught English through image theater work, theater, um, dances. I knew folk theater of around India. My principal was an Australian, but we had like amazing time. And then, so looking at these two fragments, I said, absolutely, they were two different fragments. So when he he thought of my son thought of doing this of course i went through my own exploration when i said me my own he was absolutely clear you know in fact my ex-husband had doubts and he told upright he says papa i never tell you to work leave your job in coke and work in microsoft no so i can also take my decision i know where to study and what will my future where is my future i hold it you know i know it i can hold that so i said yeah ye to bada clear hai. <laughs> and I went around, yeah, researching for, you know, how homeschoolers look like. I don't know how the homeschoolers look like. Do they have 2 plus 2 or not? What is this? I don't know how to do English in India. <laughs> so that was it. <laughs> but it must have been so empowering for him to have a mom to... Uh, give him that freedom of choice because normally we as parents do not create that space for our children with mm. the kind of cultural background, with the kind of societal norms, with the kind of upbringing uh, we've had and most of us, the kind of education we've had. Homeschooling is something which is, which is still not heard of in India. It is still not a common practice in India, let alone the COVID. <laughs> oh, <laughs> now yes. all the children are being yes, yes. Terrif terrifying. <laughs> you will be ahead of the time. <laughs> <laughs> homeschooling, you know, Rabin Nartego was a homeschooler. He opted out of main schooling and with Ashanti Niketan, I'm sure, uh, Kanchan, you come from a very rich 
um, inherited uh, arts and you know appreciative background and i know about your you know the weaving the stories that you used to tell us about sarees and handloom that's such a rich, rich tapestry you have so i don't know why am i talking but i really want you to also share it because that is very beautiful part of my own growth when i listen to your stories of 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 arts you know in the aesthetic sensibilities you hold and so i think homeschooling was there but yes you're right it was it's it still isn't very like people are not like every okay yeah let's have a nice cream it's not as common as that you know so yeah and i feel that um, for me i think allowance is a very uh, a space where i feel that people can be and fail and you know like it's for me too like how i had the allowance of in my in my childhood in my school to be the hockey captain but at the same time i could dance like a woman and be feminine but then i could be this rowdy girl looking after the being the monitor so, and then just not doing up a homework sometimes you know so there was a beautiful allowance of culture culture sensibility i think that stayed with me yeah that stayed with me. why start the anti bullying campaign chetna hmm you have seen that of course you been you i i think you have seen me all through and through looks like <laughs> <laughs> anti bullying is of course it was a part of my own um i won't say healing but as i say you know like if you believe in god or any universe we are all the same oneness so i if i don't say i'm healing myself because i'm already integrated yeah it's just i'm just going through a process just unveiling some processes for myself so uh, anti bullying was one such process for my own self and when i was teaching when we, when i was uh, a theater facilitator at the drama at, at the school one of the schools so there uh, once in the initial days a child just got up and he felt the space had a lot of allowance and he said that he used to stutter and stammer he he said since the my pre primary you know stint in the school a lot of children just you know ma'am he they make fun of me so uh, there was a deep silence in the class and the ch- children were expecting me to like give that answer no show you should not make fun of people but then i felt even they would not know i mean so there we had a dialogue and it was such a beautiful dialogue between those children and this you know this boy and i could see such beauty emerging in that session and that's what led me to do this campaign in a way which is not blaming or shaming but which is fun we did street theater we involved children we had many many people acting so in a way that it is inclusive and there's also a reintegration of that person who bullied you know not excluding that person is you know <laughs> including that person too in a way that we all learn yeah <laughs> you know bullying is something many 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 of us many 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 of us have gone through as a tribe uh and you know sometimes as we grow up that becomes our way of being humko aisa lagne lagta hai ki bullying is the way to love bullying is the way to be loved or express love and either we become somebody who you know thinks that it's okay to be bullied or we become somebody who becomes a bully in turn growing up and in both scenarios it's not a healthy scenario in both scenarios you end up either being bullied at home if you're a woman being bullied by your woman man anybody being bullied by your partner your loved one and you think that is love or you bully the people who are closest to you chetna romance and bullying ka kya combination hai aur ye kaise hota hai aur kya kiya ja sakta hai hmm what you are saying is a uh, is it's 
scientifically, I think psychologically, some people call it as Stockholm syndrome, where you start to fall in love with your own um, oppressor. And I think I have been through uh, a, my my own journey has been has had, as I say, had invited me to unveil this part of my learning process in life with my you know first marriage. And I think I I I also had this deeper journey of my own self where I invited you know uh, this internal oppression to take over me or this bully of outside of me to take over my own inside my inner fears and I think that's that's the time where I felt the weakest in my life you know I've, I've had felt the weakest smallest I shrunk uh, in every possible way mentally physically uh, on my soul level and then um, I think I think sometimes it you need to have this faith and you talk but in, for me, there was this one person who just asked me one day, you know, uh, did you have water? Pani pina? You know, and that's when I realized where is me in this entire 12 years? You know, I, I forgot my own self. I, I allowed, I allowed that to take over me. So that's when I realized Am I giving up my space or I'm letting people snatch my space? You know? What is it? And that's where the internal, uh, my, I might say, my, um, my chetna came back. My consciousness came back. I said, no, come back. Okay, hosh meow, hosh meow. Consciousness. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> So, जब आप होश में आए, जब आपको समझ आने लगी चेतना कि, you know, uh, whatever you were going through in your family situations and uh, it was bullying and कहते ना कि whatever we allow, whatever we allow is what we accept. And the day you decided to choose not to accept to be bullied, what happened then, Chetna? Oh, I think what happened was choice. It was a choice that um, <clears throat> created a, a whole ocean of possibilities you know uh, for me and my son both I would include him also in this journey because he was very young when I decided to move out um, that night I still remember in Bombay about nine years ago and uh, we found a home immediately you know like in a day or two I had the whole universe right you know supporting me at, right behind me I had the best of a broker getting me the home, the landlord just agreeing. And I people told me stories that a single woman with a child, how will you get a home? Nothing. I think I just had a choice. I took that choice and everything paved away. My work, everything. Yeah. yeah. And meanwhile, while you were searching for the home, where did you find shelter? Ah, well... People say, um, I, it's very interesting because it, it connects back to what my grandmother probably had gone through, my grandparents, because when they migrated from uh, uh, Gujarawala in 1948, they were supported by a Mohammedan family who brought them to the borders, you know, and safely. So my domestic help, who was a Mohammedan, brought me to her place safely to stay and and she also you know kind of mentored and guided me she was a very young girl of 20 years old but she stood by me mentored me counseled me and she also told me the tricks you know all that and she was this i think some and then she left you know our workspace in five six months she went away and then there was you 
<laughs> I remember. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Chitna, when you talk about your journey of your grandparents, what do you think comes in the Gipuri patterns we jite? Of course, yes. Unless we put a stop to it, unless we decide to change, unless we decide to be the change facilitators or change enablers, or be the change ourselves. Absolutely. You're right. Mm, yeah, it's like it's like a fern tree, they say. The bigger tree is also replicated in the smaller leaf of the tree. They have the same pattern. And yes, my grandmother. Everything, um, everything in life is in patterns. Whether you look at leaves, whether you look at human DNA, anything, yes. our behavior, everything. Everything, yeah. And it's very interesting that about seven years ago, when I was performing for corporates, you know, it was a play on a women empowerment play for a corporate. I remember that particular day and performance because when I when the performance finished and we were interacting with the audiences, women, about 50 women, none of them told me that they had a very unsupportive journey. All of them said, hey, my mother-in-law is great, you know, my husband's this. And I told my co-host actor, yaar, koi victim story nahi yaar, ye. Yaar, ye kya hai? nobody. And then he looked at me, he said, have you gone through something of your own journey? that now you're not inviting those stories to you? Have you kind of broken your own pattern of not looking for those people around you? And that day inside the cab when I was coming back, I think that was the day when I, I got this in my you know inner, that you said the soul. That's, yes, I have moved to something else. Yeah. And moving, moving on. You founded Rangabhumi from Kumakkar Theatre to Rangabhumi to Applied Arts Organization now. Tell us about the journey and how has it impacted you, Adi, and your partner? Yes, Rangabhumi, land of colors. Of course, right behind you, uh, Kanchan, who else will know? and inspire us better than you, a colorful person yourself. And um, I think, um, yeah, of course. <laughs> Rangila, the inspiration. <laughs> Rangila, Rangpari, ne Rang Bhumi ki inspiration di. I'm going to tell that now. Rangpari, Kanchan ne Rang Bhumi ki inspiration di, live, <laughs> on Chai Shah, etc. <laughs> Yeah, so this conversation is about you and your journey. <laughs> How can we leave the people behind? You, know? you are my story. You are my story, of course. So when I came, when when Adi and I came to this home, like this is the home where I'm sitting, is a is a space where I shifted eight nine years ago. And um, while I was in one of my spiritual groups, you know, one of the evenings. Uh, was just chanting and the lady when they finished chanting she said hey listen you should come and work with children in my school you know you 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 kind of have colors and you kind of move well so um, I said no no children I'm a corporate trainer I work with adults people who have like dimag and you, you know you can have no this thing and that thing they know when to get their lunch break and all who don't shout in the class or like that and she said, Chitna handling a bunch of children. Yes, you are the only one who can say that because people don't believe me. <laughs> you are a child yourself. <laughs> That's what my son calls me, four year old. <laughs> I like that. You are the only one who knows this and can say this. <laughs> so I went to that school. And uh, it was, again, I think it was just universe having my back because maybe I took that step. And this whole boardroom meeting full of trustees and principal, they said, wow, come on board. Just, it's beautiful what you're doing. And I said, oh God, I have to get 40 children in my class. And I went the first day. 
my god i think that was another revelation we all were in a circle and i just said listen we all will sit on the floor and we will do some warm up and i said okay ha like a big sound and they went wild in the class they said we don't want to go back to the classroom this is like the best thing ever you know teacher telling us to roll on the floor and shout you can look out of the window and just look at the road I said yeah of course you can of course i so that gave me that that i think that gave me that ray of the soul you know into their lives the the light i said yaar ye to ek haath mein aap se warm up se khush ho jate hain what about me what am i seeking then in life it's so beautiful and that's the day i think um uh, they became my uh, you know trainers or you know it was we we had this what you said initially backstage seekers and learners and learners and seekers and guru so i think it's a great relationship with the children that i have now since 10 years now almost 9 10 years have you found the child within chetna yes i have and do you think you you kind of re-nurturing yourself yes yes absolutely 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 and i have we visited have yeah i saw that yeah yeah we have a question i i have a question for chetna says dalia i know things in india are changing but we are not, not well prepared to deal with we are not prepared or address with bullying as compared to other countries we dismiss these things as if it doesn't exist in this scenario what do you think we as women should do to identify and address bullying in not just our lives but our kids lives as well yeah thank you for that question dalia and you have a lovely name first of all <laughs> yes um I think a lot of observation that I have is again I'm not moving into um, like people's personal journeys as parents as adults, but I think a lot of times when we were doing this process, I call this as a process work with children through um, applied theater because applied theater is a process of psychosocial healing of wounds. It takes its its shape from of the of of countries who were war prone. so it has an element of healing and catharsis so when we started this process of applied theater we looked at how um, as a society there were two three things that came into being that how there is also always a pressure of doing which kind of creates this less and more between people it could be between two individuals and children and that comes from the adults you know when when the children are observing the adults and their conversations like oh uske paas wo car hai he has the car i don't have the car they go to this holiday or do you think i'm good enough you know when they hear this conversation they get this um messaging that the society is about collision well i think it's about creative collision so one is that and second i think sometimes we feel that we are just teasing people you know like kind of in in whole laughter of it but i think it may may impact somebody sometime because it impacted impacted me like i was a very thin girl and when i was in school and people wanted and me to be like this khasti uh, khati piti punjabi girl but i was a very thin girl and people used to just very teasingly and you know smilingly call me names you know names they used to call me names like bindi or you are a stick like so it i kind of kind of laughed it off but i had this whole pressure inside me that i'm not turning up to be a woman like woman in you know as in a culture so i started to perform too well in academics and sports getting my trophies every time in order to compensate for this so it was very traumatic it stayed with me for years about my body image so i think um as a school as a growing up process the third thing what you asked earlier what could we do is to have these spaces where uh, we as children we as teenagers adults and pre pre teens could go and share it could it could be either a trained counselor or a space like applied theater work you know maybe 
processes or spaces like this or maybe um, a, a space where parents and children and adults could have a dialogue like an, uh, you know, an, in our applied theater work we have such kind of processes called theater of the oppressed where uh, we look at dial equal dialoguing opportunity between the oppressed and the oppressor so there are methods like that yes yeah so i think this is what probably as as a society as a culture india could start to do yeah did you and you know, yeah and you know sometimes mazak masti mein chhed khani mein hansi mazak mein we do and say things which which are really hurtful and we do not realize kyunki humko apna dard to dikhta hai samne wale ke dimag mein ya dil mein kya impact ho raha hoga ye nahi pata chalta or maybe we are too self observed to e even look at that you know what impact this will have on the other person i got it crazy in three months time imagine what stress can do to people bullying to bando ki bullying to bando ki zindagi bhar ke liye halat kharab kar deti hai yeah it can have very deep impacts absolutely <laughs> absolutely there are movies made on this yeah table number 21 of how a child was bullied became a serial killer and actually according to a research you know the majority of serial serial killers in america were people bullied in their childhood so it can be as scary as that moving on from bullying chetna you are also training in corporates and uh, you develop developing um, curriculums and practices for development uh, function you are training children in schools and colleges you youth children and youth of course you were working with children and youth even uh, way back 13 years back when we were training people on life skills what has been the change what has been the difference since then to now in your understanding and imparting of these skills and knowledge oh well i like that because i haven't answered this from my perspective it's always been the learner's perspective so it's very interesting to talk and see what emerges from this answer response hmm so for me i think my journey has been one as i always keep as my trainer says tells me to do self diagnostic so my diagnostic is that um i have become more trustworthy to my own self and to the space where i know that there is that wisdom right there and i am not the more knowledgeable other yes there is some co creation that is emerging and i just i'm there with my presence because uh, somebody chose me to be there that day and it's the beauty emerges every day the other day i'll tell you with this one child we were talking about this whole idea of english literature through theater that we're teaching in a school and they had to make this we are doing kabuli wala tagore's work and we said has anybody else impacted your life who's not been your blood relation and so this child says that uh, i want to make a story i don't know but i want to make a story he spoke about connections he said i know of a, of a person who wanted to be a doctor but the father didn't allow and i somehow i knew that he that the child will say that the person revolted and left home but the child said he spoke to his father that i don't want to be a doctor i want to be a stand up comedian but the father didn't allow they had an argument they had an argument they fought and then the child explained more to his father second year third year fourth year and then the child actually studied medicine but he became a clowning doctor he also was a medical practitioner and also laughed and had fun and i loved the way the child had the ease of just dropping the fight and being so at ease with no proving of no proving that you know one has to always pick up that fight so these are moments which 
tell me. The second thing, as I said, is to just wait. Have that patience. Be a, be there. You know, it's like I think it's like the lizard in the house who just hovers around and is isn't very interfering. It's just that we are there, just holding the container for that beautiful, some serendipitous work to emerge. You know, we are not looking for that, but something emerges, something else, and it's so joyful for all of us. It's so joyful. Yeah, that. Kanchan, are we hung? Am I hung? I can't see. Oh, I think I'm the only one here now. <laughs> yes. So till the time Kanchan is coming back. I can sing a song for you. Okay. So I'll be with some guy. Oh, is back. Kanchan is back. Please, Ghana, continue to go. Please, Ghana, continue to go. So, you Ghana, you Ghana. You know how, how I get into zones. So, my internet has got used to me going into zones. It froze. <laughs> Well, amazing, amazing. Ye song which we had put in the So ye wo wala song hai pura I had only. I had it only. Evelyn, yeah, Evelyn, yes, I heard. Hi, Evelyn. Hi. We both love Evelyn. I think yes. all the feminines out here love you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Evelyn, I can't <can't>, definitely. <laughs> <Let go. Yeah. laughs> that go. So, Gati, Gati, full song, full song, not full song like four lines, which I had put it in the promo video. One, two, three, four. Tabe pero se ujala araha hai. Tabe pero se ujala araha hai. Tere kathaon ko khangala ja raha hai. Tere kathaon ko khangala ja. Reimagining, yes. You have to go back to your roots to rectify whatever, whatever needs to be changed. You have to go back to the roots. What is it that is making you spin round and round and round and round and round and round and round in circles? What are the patterns you are holding? What is it that you need to change? What is it in and within yourself that needs a transformation? So, jab tak aap apni purani mein when you don't go go back to the old stories, when you don't indulge into catharsis. When you don't purge, a change is not possible. It demands a lot. It demands a lot. And we love you too, Evelyn. We love you too. <laughs> Evelyn! <laughs> Chetna, yeah. talking about change, talking about William, talking about the feminine part and the energy. I consider you to be a divine feminine. You're a goddess. The way you perform, the way you dance, the way you express yourself, and the way you imbibe that 
truth and honesty of your beingness. What else do you think is required for a woman to feel complete? Hmm. I think I can talk about my own self right now, I think. My personal journey is still on with something I define as rest. Is rest. I, I, I recently heard a conversation with a beautiful conversation of Supinda Sarkar and Evelet is here. And this whole phrase which emerged was of pregnant nothingness. And it was such a beautiful phrase I'm living with, the sky-clad uh, goddess. Evelyn, if you can help us with the video, the YouTube video. It's, it's beautiful. The pregnant nothingness is something which I am probably uh, seeking. To be able to be with my body, uh, to, be able, to be able to rest my body, to be able to rest my soul, with with that uselessness with just being yeah with just being How it's, it's like it? just rotting allowing yourself to rot yeah. out of yeah. all that was pungent in your being mm. allowing it to settle so that you can plug it in and throw it out Absolutely. you can just literally pull it pull it out of yourself and throw it into somewhere where it won't come back to the universe ever again. <laughs> yes. Yes, like Thor. Yeah, Avengers talk. Yes. How important do you think is the role of art? Be it music, be it poetry, be it uh, colors, be it theater. How important is the role of art in one reaching their soul purpose or their soul calling? Um, well, art, I feel by its texture, any art, as you mentioned, painting or theater, music, dance and theater performance has been very close to me. So I feel both of them, and especially theater, by its very texture, has a com has the its inbuilt texture is of a common ground. It already establishes people on a common ground by its texture, and it, it becomes so, such a non hierarchical space that you are not limited by your own self. It frees you in a way that you've been wanting to, you know, art or even if you're painting by your own self, you know, like the beautiful painting you have. It it is your canvas. It you own, the painting owns you, it's a co-creation. You know, it speaks, speaks back to you, you go back. It's such a beautiful, I call it as a praxis. You know, it's like action, but with deeper reflection. You rest, you reflect, you act, then you go back, you rest yourself and come back. So it's the praxis which is which art gives us. And I think art is so much fun, you know, fun in our own way. I'm not talking maybe for some fun in, you know, like maybe beer or night out, but art is, is so much fun. It's your, it's your space. And it's, it becomes, it becomes such a co-creation of, especially though arts that we do apply theater is, is always so immersive. It's like my daddy used to say when we were in Haridwar, that we ghat pe paani ko chuna nahi hai, Ganga ji mein dukki lagana tabhi paap jate hai. You know, so I remember you have to immerse and then come out. I love that. <laughs> so for all those who are living life on the surface, you have to live life to the fullest. <laughs> you have to immerse deep into life. You have to be one with yourself, with your truth, with your beingness, to be able to experience the joy in life. Hum khud se hi sach nahi bolenge, to dusro se to hum chhut bolte hi rahenge, which means we are bullying ourselves. Yeah. And if we are bullying ourselves, we will 
harass others, we'll bully others, we'll not create a conducive, safe environment to live, let alone work. Bless you, girl, drink some water. Yeah. And we have a question for Chetna. Chetna, could you read our question? Yes, that's my friend from Norway. Inga Mete, Inga Mete, please meet Kanchan. She's running a beautiful NGO where there are beautiful Indian handmade clothes. And uh, uh, Inga Mete also is doing beautiful handmade magic change and um, women and clothes and handlooms in India too. Thanks, thanks, Inga Mete. How does you have interactive room theatre with people in Europe, around the world? Amazing. Wow, J19. Yes, Inga Mete. So, uh, we've been doing a lot of work with children across borders in UK, Spain, uh, in the University of Washington, where we made this performance called Raise Your Hands Only If You Know the Right Answer. So we always are pressurized to know the right answer. So the play performance <laughs> investigates that what is the right answer? Am I supposed to know? The right there, answer. There are no wrong answers, so every answer yes. is right answer. Yes, yes. <laughs> Absolutely. So this is the play that investigates how from micro classroom to macro boardrooms, we are all always pressurized to just be somebody else giving the right answer. So we've done this performances. These children, 11, 12, 13 year old, have been performing for children outside of India, in UK, as I said, Spain, Israel, many, many countries. And we've had such beautiful, beautiful insights into intercultural sensibilities of how children across borders go through the similar experience. And also the World Climate Change, which Inger Mete is a co-founder of. We've been working with children in Rajasthan and how uh, they have started to co-create these seeds and story of nature, of journey of nature. So I think um, we, the Earth, Mother Earth, is really demanding a new world out of all of us, the new world order. <laughs> talking about the new world order, talking about what Mother Earth is demanding. Let us give ourselves some time to rest. Let us give ourselves some time to love ourselves. Let us give our time, give ourselves some time to love another because there's no separation. Each one of us are a part of the same geometric pattern. We are the part of the same oneness of the universe. We are the part of the energy that flows through each one, each one. It's just that we need to tap, tap into our own soul's energy to feel the love within, to be able to express love to another. Forgiveness and love come with compassion. And compassion is something which you need to first feel for yourself. Only when you forgive and love yourself, Will you be able to love another compassionately without any barriers, without any doubts, expressing yourself to the fullest? Chetna. Matra, I could be bolu, tumko to vasti hai chati hai. I'm just wanting to sing this. Bum bum bole, musti melode. Bum bum bole. <laughs> Let's do that sometime very very soon. Yes. Chetna, thank you so much for accepting this invite to Chai Chai. In spite of your packed schedule of Zoom sessions, of theatre sessions through the day, I know you're very tired. And I'll say you something after uh, this conversation 
which will allow you to rest, enjoy, enjoy your day, enjoy your night, enjoy your life, lots of love. Thank you so much for coming to Chai Shai. There's much, much more we have to talk about and maybe in some other episodes, some other time. Thank you, Kanchan. Thank you for thinking of me and keeping me in your sphere of uh, energy always. Thank you so much for inviting me. Thank you. Thank you, my love. Take good care of yourself. Yes. Guys out there, I hope you enjoyed the conversation. I hope that there was something from this conversation which will help you find a part of yourself that you've been seeking or looking for. Have a great, great night ahead. Sleep well. Take very good care of yourself. Drink a lot of water. And remember, tea helps you energize at all times, at all days, in any given situation. So here's to some good white tea, which has antioxidants and helps you sleep well. Good night. Take care. Shabbat. Bye-bye.